Cool. All right, everybody. So I will share my screen and then drop the notes in the comments. Let's go ahead and share that. Um, and then I'd encourage everybody, if you have um, read through these notes already, you have comments or issues that you want to bring to the table, there's a section down at the bottom here um, called Top of Mind for Team Contributors. You can go ahead and punch anything in there during the meeting, and we'll try to get to all that stuff uh, before the end of the meeting. If we don't have time to get through it, we can take it asynchronously and potentially bring it uh, up during the, the next two-week period. Um, so we'll jump in. I threw the, um, can everybody see this okay? Yeah, I can see just yep. fine, Torpin. Cool. Uh, and, and, and real quick, are, are, you are you taking notes or do you need someone else to? Uh, I think I can go ahead and take notes while we're going. Um, cool. In the future, we might put this on like a rotation, but uh, I'll leave that up to y'all. <laughs> I'm still getting a sense for the note taking culture around here. <laughs> um, but um, basically the purpose of this meeting y'all is uh, to kind of conclude the decisions we need to make in order to um, kind of design the MVP for the interaction between uh, integrating the indexer into Kubo nodes. And so uh, we need y'all's support to kind of nail down what are the outlying items that will enable us to do this, any blockers for decisions that we need to cover, um, and then support work for any information y'all need to further understand the work that we're doing um, so that you feel unburdened to make these approvals. Um, the important reference documents section up here, there's kind of a, a few um, important decision docs that have been started that are in uh, various states of completion, but um, there's the SID contact in Kubo, which kind of details a lot of the um, technical details of what it is we're attempting to accomplish. And then um, one of the components of this that we're gonna be discussing is double hashing. There are technically two documents on this right now, but I'd like to point you towards the one with the hourglass here. Um, this document's had some pretty recent revisions, which include more detailed um, kind of components of our approach and the leverage kind of comparison that we're making um, on how to proceed with this decision. So I think y'all will find that document to be very relevant. I threw the link to said contact up in here, uh, just in case anybody that's watching kind of wants to follow along and isn't familiar with that stuff. Um, and then there's uh, this IPFS asynchronous discussion with leadership on Kubo integration, which is ultimately the decision document that we're hoping to inform uh, so that our leadership can kind of provide a path forward. Any questions about any of that? No, uh, no that that all this sound that sounds good, Dorian. I think maybe there's one a more tactical thing first, just to make sure we're aligned on regarding the uh, HTTP delegated uh, routing API getting that um, deployed to Kubo, like basically getting the bridging aspect between the Hydras and uh, CID.contact using the updated HTTP delegated routing API. Um, that's kind of what we already had in place with Reframe. Obviously, we're now updating to this more HTTP uh, friendly API, and just want to make sure we're that we nail that uh, by the end of the year, um, so that we can kind of close right. Like the the milestone one in this whole endeavor was first about getting gateways to be talking to CID.contact. By default, and we first did that with uh, reframe in that process, and shortly afterwards, we discovered the problems with the reframe API, um, which is where all the work has been to get to the just generic HTTP or get to the HTTP delegated routing API. And I want to make sure we kind of close out on that guy um, uh, too. So maybe I'm just wondering if maybe if we can quickly start with that to make sure all parties are aligned, um, and then get into the rest of the stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for jumping in and kind of prioritizing that, Steve. We can um, get straight to that topic. So I'm happy to take that. One. I'm probably most in the details, but I, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. But I'm happy to like just ask a couple questions here. No, no toes stepped upon. Please jump in. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so I guess I think a couple things for people to be aware of. 
um, well, I think it also probably applies to a content routing uh, working group. I think as probably most people are aware, we are doing, we are dialing down the non-bridging portions of the Hydras on Thursday. Um, you know, Probe Lab is leading that effort in terms of the communication and all the monitoring. Um, and we, uh, folks like Gus and Antonio will be doing the actual Hydra deployments for that for that work. We're, and the only change we're making here is basically you know, severing the uh, database connection between uh, the Hydras and the you know, and DynamoDB. We're not doing anything else uh, special here. We're not trying to minimize responses or anything. We're only not, we're basically going to be returning empty results, but we will be returning results. It'll just be empty set. So that's happening on Thursday. As a result of that, Probe Lab has requested that we not do any other hydro deployments beforehand or afterwards for some number of days. So they kind of have a stable environment for them to be monitoring the network. As a result, um, I'm sorry, let me pull up, uh, I guess, yeah, yeah. so as, as, as a result, we are not, um, we're not going to deploy the Hydras with the updated HTTP delegated routing API until uh, December 8th, so that we've given the Hydras, you know, we've given ProBlab enough time to be doing their analysis. Um, so let me so I, I that, that doesn't block uh, CID contact from doing any of its own deployments beforehand. Uh, but uh, that's that's kind of the Hydra timeline. And I'll pull up the issue here where we've been writing this out. I, I guess I just wanted to see does when CID.contact thinks they can do um, deployment. I mean, we can do it quite quickly. We have had a, a draft PR of the addition of this HTTP delegated thing for 10 days uh, and are waiting for code review um, that we linked in this content writing working group Slack channel. Uh, so no one has commented or approved that PR um, okay. to confirm that we have it compatible uh, with the spec that you guys have uh, led. So as soon as you sign off on it, we're happy to deploy it uh, and we can deploy it in, you know, within a day. Is that that's its own implementation? It's not consuming code delegated Correct. routing. Okay, got it. Cool. Okay, and so I guess the, the we, obviously we have been working um, on a, I guess, on a practical matter. Uh, obviously, we have been working on a, a Go implementation of the spec. Um, we're actually planning to move that. Not we're not planning to put that into the Go delegated routing repo. We're actually going to put that into the lib IPFS repo, so that things like hide like our hydras can have um, both deployed uh, at the same time because because we won't we won't hit uh, Go. Uh, minor version, you know, issues because it'll actually be a separate repo. Um, that's what we're planning to do on the Hydras. I guess if uh, if CID.contact wanted to use that, they could. But I guess obviously it's totally fine for you all to do your own implementation. I guess what, what's our preferred path forward here? Keep you know supporting uh, Bedrock's own implementation, or should we try to consolidate on the libipfs version? Having multiple implementation, like having us own it means that we will debug the server side and understand mm -hmm. it rather than like punting it back to you guys in some sense. And this is meant to be a pretty simple REST one. It was quite simple for us to take our current find thing and, and have an adapted version that was compatible with your uh, semantics as proposed in the spec. Um, and so in the same way that we found that that initial REST HTTP API was pretty minimally painful, I, I think it's easier if, if we own our code cool. that we're serving as the server side. Okay, Fan, uh, sounds so, sounds sounds great. Um, cool. So I think we just need to get on our uh, on our board that we make sure we look at the PR. And I, you've got it. You guys have got it linked here in the notes. Awesome. Does that, any any concerns there, um, Gus? For me, I'll take a look at this and get this reviewed for them this week. No, nope. I'll take a look at it today. Cool. Okay. So it should be it should be pretty small, uh, which is great. Um, it's uh, I think it's you know under fifty lines. Yeah, I think I took a look at it last week, early last week or something, but I didn't have the context to understand yeah, what I was. No worries. So I and, and I think I need probably one more pass to add the more recent um, response headers that got specified. So I think those okay. aren't there yet. Uh, but other than that, should be what we need. All right. Sweet. Um, okay, so just to make sure we're, uh, is it okay if I quickly share my screen here? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, uh, just if quick... you, with Zoom, I need to unshare so that you can share. Got it. There you go. 
Great. So just yeah, timeline wise, uh, so we'll get the Go delegated routing changes uh, released and merged today. Um, again, that'll happen in libipfs, not in this repo. Um, we're not like we're not going to deploy. Well, sorry, we'll make the changes in Hydras and then deploy them on the eighth. Uh, I, was, you know, I think sometime this week we'll get the CID contact changes merged and then I'll let you all do a deployment. So I'll update the dates here, but we'll, we'll assume this is happening by end of week. Um, and then we also have to make the changes in Kubo itself, uh, which will, you know, Antonio is working on right now. And it's not, obviously it's not, it's not done yet. I, I don't know. I'm assuming we're probably looking at near the end of the week as well on this guy. We didn't actually ask him today earlier, but that's, I don't know. It, it, the I, point, point is like the key thing we wanted to make sure is that this gets out with the, um, that this gets out with the next Kubo release, which we're going to be doing the release candidate on the 8th and doing the final release the following week before we all break. Cool, but I'm not seeing any concern on the, the timeline here. It looks like we should be able to hit this. I, yeah, the, the one other fun thing was the it turned out bifrost didn't prioritize uh doing the direct connection we we ping them at the beginning of this week again and um they're they're going to see if they can also get the direct connection from gateways to sid contact um actually running this week uh but we'll see um so you know we would have liked that before the hydras uh it, it's a shame that it you know we had we ended up with two months where that didn't get rolled out that config change God. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. That. That's sorry. I, I've actually meant to to start with that to see where that was actually at. Because I, I was looking at the config yesterday, and yeah, it didn't look like any of it had. It only been on like one or two banks or something, right? They hadn't pushed it everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. But so at this point, uh. Well, I guess. We, yeah. I. I but are, are you are you still going to push on them to deploy it using reframe? Right. We we would like that to happen before the hydro drill down the uh, dial down as a way of reducing mm -hmm. potential impact there. Right. I like see. that that would make us feel better about hydras changing configs in ways that we don't know. Because if there are issues with hydras, it means that we're not uh, losing service during the time that we're spending. We're we're figuring out what's what's up. Um, so it, okay. it makes the the hydro changes like less sort of critical uh, and less like scary to mess with. I see. Okay, but, but uh, I like are you all are owning or working with Bifrost to see about yep. that happening. Yep. Okay, um, is is this from your point of view a blocker for the Hydra dial down work that we're doing? Uh, I have not raised a flag yet. We'll okay. see if we can just make it not be. Um, I see. Um, okay, this sound sounds good. I guess there's nothing else coming to mind for me on this you know immediate tactical topic. So I'm I'm good to you move on now unless anyone else has any questions no thanks for jumping in and prioritizing that steve that was very valuable okay great um great and i guess then the other thing that would be ideal is right when we do the rc we we do get that rc deployed across um bifrost infrastructure ideally as part of that we're also um converting from using well, obviously, they'll have to kind of switch from using reframe to the new delegated routing config for hitting CID.contact. Um, like, I think it would it would be great if we can go into the Christmas break where at least the link between the gateways and CID.contact is the way we ideally want it. I, I know we won't have we won't have solved uh, we likely won't have solved Kubo by then, but at least we've got the gateways fully done done done. Okay, cool. I'm I'm stop sharing. C carry on there, Torvin. You bet. Thanks, Steve. Let me share my screen. All right. Um, so another topic that's kind of um, high level, top of mind, is a commitment to the double hashing design um, pathway. We're currently, I would say, wrestling a little bit with uh, two options. Um, before I get too into the weeds on this, <laughs> I should give Ivan a chance to to jump in and take the reins. I think he's uh, he's going to be our, our subject matter expert on the topic. 
Ivan, would you care to kind of provide a, a high level summary for the folks on the call real quick of these two options documented here? Yeah, sure. So um, uh, we, we started thinking about uh, how to implement the double hashing story on the on the indexes side. Um, in the in the main uh, notion doc uh, that's uh, about the double hashing story, there is a section about the indexes, and uh, we started updating this uh, section today. Uh, basically, uh, the punchline is we've uh, done some back of uh, envelope calculation for like how much storage is going to be required, uh, extra storage is going to be required if we were to implement like the, the spec as is uh, and etc. So if talking, if you scroll down a bit, uh, down, 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 basically, yeah, there, there are a bunch of sh thoughts there. So, uh, but, and um, uh, we started I, thinking- I looked at this and I'm, I'm, I think we need to revisit this uh, before we try and get to consensus because I think it's much less, like we're already storing a value that is a pure ID slash context ID as the value. And the the encryption here is just adding the small amount of salt in addition. So I don't think it's an additional 70 plus 12 plus eight bytes. I think it's gonna be maybe eight to 32 bytes per record that we end up adding um, versus the code. Uh, let, let's say uh, basically it's still uh, being worked on basically. So let's uh, revisit it uh, uh, later on, but basically in the next couple of days, we should be, up to up to speed with the the proposal from the from the indexing side. Yeah. So basically, it's, anyway, it's what, what, what I wanted to say here was my my sense is that the extra storage is not something that we need as indexer to raise a flag on, or, or I would prefer not to, and just say yes, it's going to be somewhat bigger, but not so much bigger that we can't just encrypt each value. Uh, the I think the main interface difference that we need to figure out is that our values are not directly pure IDs. So um, when you look at the DHT variant of double hashing, the thing you get back from your initial query is the pure ID encrypted by the SID that you're asking for. Um, whereas in the indexer, we have a, a combination of the pure ID and a context ID, uh, where the context ID is giving us more specific information about this the specific provider records. Uh, so for instance, you know, what deal is this GraphSync peer uh, advertising the SID within? And so there's there's something that comes back to a client that is encrypted by the SID that is not just the pure ID. And so that's the addition to the interface that we're, for delegated routing, uh, double hashing, that indexing is going to end up sort of colliding with if we use exactly the same interface that the DHT double hashing is on. So I think the question is, do we just propose what this additional or, or what the double hashing that works for indexing uh, in the context of the HTTP delegated routing API is, um, you know, what, how do we, how do we manage this, uh, you know, addition of some additional context uh, in this proposal that indexing is going to want? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm still fleshing out the ingestion side uh, of the story. So I've been so far concentrating on the reader to uh, client to index side. So yeah, I will aim to flesh out some thoughts on the ingestion the next couple of days. So I think um, the outcome from this is we'll we'll continue iterating on this. We've got a little bit of um, discovery to kind of wrap up. Uh, but asynchronously, the documents that give you a good general sense of the direction we're taking with this uh, is available so that you all are welcome to kind of take a look um, in the time being. And then I'll, I'll take an action item to follow up on once decisions are made, um, making sure that you all understand clearly the proposal that we're putting forward. Yeah, I, I have like a very, very, very quick question. Uh... Maybe, uh, maybe it's out of work, but the question is like, uh, this ingestion story, is it like specific to the Falco indexer or is it uh, like indexers accepting uh, provider puts from 
clients is that still on the roadmap is that still planned when non we have a different thing? model it's not specific to filecoin but it i mean in that we're ingesting indexes and advertisements from web3 storage and other ipfs nodes as well and ipfs clusters and so forth um it's not a put based model it rather the indexers pull that content and expect the publisher to be online and available to uh act as the server that that answers their requests for it so publishers who have content to indexers will say that they they have content is basically a message that they'll broadcast out to get to indexers and then indexers will pull that content from them periodically um is is the model um right now we own that ingest spec we have it in the ipni slash specs um you know I'm, i i think we we would be potentially amenable to uh having that become a broader uh ipip style uh spec um but I think it has been useful for initial iterations for us to just own that um, in terms of the speed that we've been able to modify it at to figure out all the bugs and you know what we wanted it to be. Um, okay, okay. I, I, I'll check that and if I have any follow up questions. So Specs on IP and I is being worked on is uh, is going to get pushed today. Uh, we're just moving things around. But... Thanks for that warning, Masi. <clears throat> I could get confusing. <laughs> Okay, so just to um, recap that really quickly, we, we've got some final ideation to kind of lock down our, our proposed method, and we'd like to propose a method um, on the basis of the research that we've done so far. We feel like that's the quickest way to a, um, a feasible outcome. So as soon as we've got um, kind of a, a more concrete um you know, proposal put together for that, we'll inform the team and um, hopefully move forward. All right, we'll move on from that. Um, there was a topic for uh, clarification on which indexers are, are fit. Uh, Steve, I believe you uh, brought this up and I think it's a really good point. Uh, to be added to the Kuba maintainers default list. <clears throat> so the concept is essentially, what, what is our baseline and what are the criteria for um, an indexer potentially being added to um, the Kubo maintainers? Do we have um, criteria identified at all yet for what would um, be deemed appropriate for uh, like a baseline for these indexers to qualify? Um, no, uh, no, that that hasn't been specified or written out. I mean, it's it's sort of been the uh, I, I think part of the reason that hasn't occurred was because we hadn't gotten to the, the position of needing to come up with that policy. Um, you know, like if we go an ambient discovery route, that's a that's a decision and policy that's outside of Kubo. OK. Um, but so obviously, the, obviously if, if we if the decision gets made of like no we're going to be hard code we're going to default be defaulting some of these into kubo then i think we need to come up with that um but i i don't think any serious thought has been given to what what exactly the acceptance criteria would be so i think it's i think it's a good i think it's a valid question um because I, I at it, it, well, I, I know we had a little bit of back and forth on this in the CID contact and Kuba document, and I don't know where you, you probably have since updated. Like, I'm assuming if we don't have it in Kubo, we still have to answer those questions somewhere. Like, if we want to be able to put things in our bootstrappers list, if uh, you know, so you, there's still a policy decision of like, well, who who gets to be uh, the delegated, sorry, the default delegated routers um within our bootstrappers which kind of have a privileged position so like i think we're likely still going to cross this bridge um but i guess i think the kubo team so far has been skirting around it that's fair um so i'm still wrapping my head around a, a lot of this <laughs> it's sure. my third, third yeah. week. but one thing i'd like to just kind of throw out there i'll ask the uh the dumb question is are the the criteria for baselining these is, is there an association with kind of baselining off of for instance security requirements privacy requirements reliability 
um, or all of the above. Um, if, if we were to try to put something like this together, what would the focus of those criteria be? Performance, et cetera. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. So there's different there's different classes of users that care about different trade-offs like that. So okay. That makes sense. That's that's why this is such a uh, such an obtuse question, isn't it? Um okay. It's also, yeah, why we are so not only hesitant, but why it's so difficult to figure out what's what the criteria is here. Um, fair enough. So what actually needs to happen here is we need to essentially kind of collaboratively come up with um, a, a baseline for what criteria would need to be established mm -hmm. to in ensure that these are met. Is, is this something that this group perceives we would seek like community feedback, for instance, from service providers or my perspective that I think would be beneficial, but also would probably um, take a long time or potentially not necessarily um, bias us towards action on this discussion. Can we um, solve for this discussion internally among our work groups? Yeah, my, my guess is we can probably, uh, you know, drive it and put a stance for it. I think as, as long as we do all the work in the open and there's the ability for others to watch it and chime in and we can, you know, make sure relevant uh, parties are aware of it and have the opportunity to comment on it. Um, so any of the current indexer um, providers or people that are coming on board, maybe as well the IPFS uh, operators channel is a good place to expose it. Um, again, I don't think I would block here, but I think just giving, as long as we have high visibility into what's happening as we move it forward, I think that's probably okay. Okay. So um, I, I won't um, volunteer anyone for any work on this call, but let's take this as a kind of an asynchronous action item that we need to um, kind of form at least a rough outline for what our baseline for acceptance criteria would be to uh, integrate, um, integrate indexers into uh, maintainers. If we need to start like a brainstorming session with a smaller group to kind of kick this off, I can uh, organize that, but I won't belabor this point uh, too much. What's the, um, so if, if, if we're not going to be hard coding these because we're doing ambient discovery, like what's the urgency of doing this then? The, the urgency we're hearing is that there is a desire to have indexers uh, able to be queried by Kubo nodes in order of two months, not in six months. And we need to look at that ambient discovery one, but it seems very hard to promise that we could get ambient discovery in order of two months. Right. Okay, but th the so this would then be a stopgap then until we get... Yes. So, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't spend a whole no lot problem. of time trying to work out a... Sorry, Lytle, you're, I can barely hear you. Um, I mean, if it's just a stopgap, then we probably shouldn't spend a lot of time working out a process and criteria and all this stuff, right? If it's just going to be something that we keep around for a few months and then throw away. Do we have a template on um, what we, like how we select bootstraps? Um, or, or have we had this conversation in the past around we bootstraps? I'm not bootstrap. sure I have history there. We, we just run four nodes. And, no, actually more, but we, we just have rows with run. We don't select them. Um, we were talking about adding location ins to the gateway. So that would be either part of the CD, get parameter, whatever. But like in the URL of a gateway, you would be able to specify something like a multi-address that points to someone that has the data or maybe an indexers that know someone that points to the data. And maybe that could be the stopgap. So instead of having CID.contact directly into Kubo, you could just add CID.contact to your CID somehow, and the gateway will know to ask CID.contact for it. Would that work as a stopgap?
Would you mind repeating it once more for me, please? So for the gateways, uh, we were thinking to add location hints. That would be either get parameter or in the CID, something that tells the gateway where it can find the data, either directly a provider that hosts the data or some indexers that then will be able to find you someone. So we have like no, a I mean, get so, so I don't think yeah. that solves this um, because A, we're going to have the gateways always, always querying already. So the gateways will always be, be looking. That's happening like this week or next week. So we don't need uh, an additional hints at the gateway level. And then like the point is, we've got more content in the indexers already than in the DHT. So that should be a default. Like it, it, it's it, going to location-based writing where it's only some subset of SIDs that are somehow communicated with an additional like location hint where it's opt-in uh, is weird when the default of where this SID is most likely to be able to be mapped to providers is in this other database that's only being opt-in. Like the point is we want a default, not opted in. Uh, I just want to say, Gus, I appreciate you kind of biasing us towards some action here on this. I think if we can come up with a stop gap solution, you're right. We shouldn't invest too much time and energy in a, a complex resolution to baselining. But uh, also, if we can um, start with a brainstorm of criteria that, um, you know, kind of gets the process started for the team so that we understand the criteria that would uh, potentially be selectable. I think I think that'll at least help get the, the folks moving in the right direction. Um, this topic, I don't know that we'll um, resolve here on this call. So I'll take an action item to kind of asynchronously spur this conversation on and we can um, kind of continue this in GitHub if everyone agrees, unless one of you has a, has a strong opinion about um, persisting with a potential solution. Forever holding. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. All right. <clears throat> um, next up on the list, I, I brought this item up just to ensure that we had completely closed this out. But I saw a comment from Liddell um, in in Slack which uh, was on the IPIP337 regarding the stats endpoint on uh, current operators. Is this consistent across all operators? I just wanted to make sure that um, there wasn't any like additional outstanding or blocking work associated with that question because I didn't see it get answered. Um, this was in response to a question to Will about um, kind of how, uh, let's see here. Liddell, do you know the question that I'm referring to here? Uh, I mean, I, I commented because it's the first time I see this endpoint. It was never mentioned at any point. OK, not in any way um, blocking any decision making or anything like that. We can uh, skip over this in that case then. Yeah, it sounds like, you know, the question was more like, uh, hey, if this is like something you use for the, your use case, should this be part of the spec or this is just specific to your? service um, if it's specific to the service it's the scope yeah unless like I, I guess the question is do we expect clients to be querying this uh, if and it's not in the spec then it, clients will not implement this right but but is there a value like for why clients would want to for why we would put it in the spec uh yeah. like it's something we use for monitoring and for like our next web page but it's not something that we have clients actually querying right now so if that is the value of it then it's not something that we would put in the spec i'm taking from this that it's not uh necessarily something of value that we want to include in the spec am i am i reading that accurately Yes, I think that's correct. I don't think we need it in this spec. Perfect. 
Yeah, in um, general, I, th I think uh, clients will kind of like do soft probing via HTTP head, making sure the endpoints are there. If not, they will kind of like blacklist the specific endpoint and not retry. That's all. Yeah, that seems more reasonable than, than needing to specify this. Great. Thanks, y'all. Um, moving on. The uh, IPIP342 ambient discovery of content routers. So we had um, this. Oh no. The, the suspense is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Torfin is very good at staying still. Two truths and a lie. Who wants to go? <laughs> I guess uh, are we are we reasonably happy on what that proposal for content routers is, and the next step is implementation, or is there more on sort of like a draft design doc that we would want, and should we do more rounds of like trying to think about what a design would look like before we move to an implementation? Um, is probably where we are on on that ambient discovery. I think the other questions there that we're going to need to figure out is what is an MVP? Um, because there is the potential for an infinite amount of work under that design doc, especially in the modeling and so forth. Um, and so figuring out how to scope that down to something that we can actually feel like is tangible is going to, is going to be some work. Um, I'm happy to try and work with maybe Torfin is the right person to like think about what to propose what an MVP looks like in terms of work items and try and break that down. That that seems like one thing. I think the other one is what is the work split there? Uh, I think we, we know that there's probably some modeling that we want to do. There's some integration into Kubo that's gonna need to happen, right? Like most of the code is in Kubo. Uh, and so there's at least some involvement on on stewards that we're gonna be asking for if, if, if yeah. in that in that path, um, yeah, so. I I think like my, the MVP in my head is something that's it's in Kubo, but it's like opt-in and we would opt-in on the bootstrap nodes. So essentially the boot. So they're all running and advertising the new protocol and that yeah, seems yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, that simplifies that deployment. And you know, now suddenly uh, the existing bootstrap nodes in uh, every uh, IPFS node will, the default bootstrap nodes will already uh, provide this it. protocol. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and we could hard code like, like in the first round, like the thing that we could do in a few months potentially is have bootstrap nodes running and advertising some hard-coded set of indexers yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. as the ones that they know about. Um, so not do the gossip, like advertising of your own new indexer that could be malicious yet. Um, and then and then at the same time, figuring out some of the like feedback loop through through monitoring or measurement so we can see clients reporting back their stats and use that as more something closer to real data of what that feedback loop is going to look like in terms of tuning uh, before we actually end up with the full dynamics of that feedback loop potentially spiraling out of control. Yeah, I don't know if it's useful, but uh, Kubo is still always connecting to bootstrap nodes. That, that's been my understanding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, if we could like park solving that until we have a real discovery here but uh, this way we you know we don't hard code any strings in kubo uh, and we we don't uh, like the problem is you know the, there are different uh, problems but the main problem is like having clients being stuck on some hard coded string and then having to like write migrations people often don't up upgrade but if we do it this way we don't need to uh, even look, if that's all client, uh, like two year old, it will still get uh, like the new ones over this protocol. So I think that's a fairly good compromise. Cool. Um, I guess I don't know if Torfin's going to come back or if his internet just uh, went out entirely, but um, we can definitely try and like propose uh, some milestones of what these various levels of deployment might look like. Um, and that, that seems like the, the next step here. Uh, and I think the other thing that we'll propose is what that breakdown would be between work that we will hope to get help from, uh, or that we think the stewards need to own because it is in IPFS or in Kubo directly. Um, 
So certainly the deployment, uh, but I need to think about you know what steps uh, before that is also it makes more sense for for stewards to own. Um, but but I think that's that's probably the right thing. I, I think we're reasonably happy with the basic sketch where the next like the 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 thing that would change this design in my head is data uh, more so than opinions, right? Like. We have some uncertainty of like, does this actually work? But the way that we're going to understand, is it going to be reasonably sane is data. So we should see if we can get some entity like probe lab to help with modeling. And if not, we need to figure out who's gonna do that, like the simulation. Um, and then we need to see if we think that the first milestone MVP of bootstrap notes running it would be enough to like, what data are we gonna get? And what would we do to refine the design based on that data? Seems like the right question to be asking. Um, but cool, we'll, we'll, we'll own proposing what an MVP next, next steps on, on building look like under this design. I, I will try and go back to the stock and write some notes here, uh, to our end. This is the MVP for the ambient discovery of content routers, right? So, okay. so yeah, so, so the next step that I'm happy to own is trying to write out milestones and what work would be under that next MVP round. Thank you. Um, so tracking time, we actually landed right where we were hoping with kind of a, a wrap up section for, uh, anything that's top of mind for team members. So this is more of an open call out for anybody that wants to bring, uh, topics to the work group, um, that weren't referenced in these prior discussions on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Um, so open to, uh, if we could start with the IPFS stewards, um, did y'all have anything to bring to the work group? And um, this can be anything topically uh, in reference to, you know, gathering further data, documentation on uh, index or node operation, if you need details uh, or outstanding kind of approvals associated with the work that any of us are doing, that type of thing, um, open, open topic for that. I have a very quick kind of like co additional context that, uh, um, you know, the gateways are the main use case, but then we have the, the actual IPFS nodes, uh, which, um, which could be desktop nodes for being run by individuals. And while we control IPFS desktop and we can adjust its configuration freely, we can like ship uh, to releases uh, one in one day and they get automatically updated. Uh, we don't have that uh, flexibility with a partner like Brave. Uh, Brave is running Kubo node, but they essentially have hard coded configuration there, which their security team review. And uh, they're very skittish around things like DNS privacy leaks. Uh, Anything that smells like leaking user browsing history, even if there are three layers of indirection, it will be problematic. Even if it finally passes, it will be very slow to go through review. Uh, so I just wanted to flag. So this like, group is cognizant that it's not like stewards just pushing, uh, pushing uh, some things uh, for the sake of pushing, but it's like actual limitation we may hit with partners. So it's good to have at least have answers. Uh, or like a plan on the roadmap, just like Will said, uh, it's fine to do some compromises with like bootstrappers having hard coded list and don't, not having like any reputation system yet. Uh, and then doing the next stage, but you know, having that plan will make some discussions way easier. So when we ship new version of Kubo and we ask Brave to upgrade, uh, they, their security team may ask some things and it would be good that we are prepared for that. So that's like the only like meta uh, thought I have. Thanks. That's actually, I think, really valuable context for everybody on the call. It, it helps to uh, kind of give the broader team um, an understanding of the decision-making process and what kind of drives some of these barriers or obstacles to uh, committing to a pathway. I think it's important for everybody to understand. Appreciate you bringing that up. Um, any questions about that from anybody on the team or other um, items that are top of mind for the IPFS stewards? 
Cool. Um, let's jump to the network indexer team. Um, is there anything top of mind for anybody on the team or um, kind of efforts that you want to make this work group aware of uh, contextually that you think would be beneficial to the working relationship across the teams? Let, let's make sure to have the, to, is, do we have additional biweekly instances of this uh, working group call? If, if not, we should keep scheduling these. Uh, I think in two weeks, we definitely should be checking in on where we are on hydro drawdown um, gateways and uh, subsequent uh, things. Good call, well, um, we set this up for a biweekly. So it'll be every two weeks. Um, if it's possible, I'll try to compact this to maybe a 45 minute or even a half hour meeting as the work group proceeds. I think for this kickoff, an hour was beneficial because there's a lot of kind of balls being juggled right now by uh, everybody on the team, but- I'm, uh, I'm just noting that I don't see it on December 13th right now. So we need to schedule the one in two weeks. That definitely should be uh, bi-weekly. Let me get that set up. Just do it now while we're on the call. Oh, you're right. All right, thanks all for calling that out. Um, it should be uh, popping up as an invite for everybody. All right, um, so for our action items that came up during this meeting, there were two that I highlighted. Please call out any that you may have heard that uh, I didn't recognize. One was the uh, approval on the implementation for um, basically where we're gonna put the code for the um, IPNI uh, team to own the code for the uh, HTTP API migration, replacing the reframe API, I think we found issues with. <clears throat> I have uh, Gus looking into that kind of by the end of the week. And I think Gus, if you need any context or support from us, obviously team's here for you. Um, Sounds good. Like oh, go ahead. Oh, I just said sounds good. Cool. Um, and then also, um, Will volunteered to take some action on the ambient discovery of content routers proposal. He's going to put together an MVP for us. Um, we'll communicate, I think, both of these things out in the content routing work group. Um, but uh, if we need more hands on kind of coordination of efforts or anything like that, I'll, I'll keep an eye out and um, be here to support that if we do. And then uh, Steve's going to help me get access to the Zoom so I can record the meetings and not have to bother him <laughs> every time. Um, so we finished with a little bit of spare time, uh, which is great. Uh, I'll post a video of this in the content routing work group from the recording that Steve took. <clears throat> Does anybody else have anything they want to bring up uh, prior to us closing this out? All right. Well, we'll get a few minutes back. I want to thank you all for joining this. I think it was uh, pretty successful. If you have any feedback for how this was run for improvements that you'd like to see before the next one in two weeks, uh, feel free to reach out to me directly and we can restructure this however we need to to be the most effective. Uh, I appreciate any and all feedback. Um, but for the time being, I just want to say thanks, everybody. I think this was really helpful. Have a good rest of your week if I don't talk to you.